good morning. Welcome to chapel at the Christ School of Theology. It's good to have you here today as we take up the gospel for the second Sunday in this season of Lent. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Heavenly Father, you reveal your glory by the mercy given through your word, which calls back all who have erred and strayed from your ways. So embrace them in the truth of your word, that they would be held fast in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came by night to Jesus and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and we bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you of earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? No one has, as, no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Greetings to you. Greetings on this day that the Lord has made a day for us to rejoice and be glad. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. Truly, truly, says Jesus. Amen, amen. I tell you the solemn truth. Jesus says this as if he means something by it. He's not just flapping his lips here. The Gospel of John is the evangel of truth. John the evangelist puts truth in Jesus' mouth 
more than any other writer. His gospel averages five uses of true, truth, or truly in every chapter. About once for every eight verses. In John, we have the pinnacle of truth. Jesus' identification of it saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In the Gospel of John, we have the nadir of truth. Pilate's question of it asking, what is the truth? In John, we have the epitome of truth. It can be standing right in front of you, and you won't recognize it. Pilate doesn't. The crowd shouting, crucify him, doesn't. And here in the passage before us, Nicodemus doesn't. John the evangelist seems determined to make Nicodemus an example. He makes sure to inform us of Nicodemus' status, a Pharisee and ruler of the Jews. As a Pharisee, he would have known the Torah backward and forward. He'd be well-versed in all the regulations written to interpret the 600-plus commandments contained in the Torah. As a ruler of the Jews, he'd number among the Sanhedrin, the highest legislative and judicial body of the Jews. Nicodemus was no slouch when it came to knowing stuff. His status proved his capabilities. The interpreter's Bible commentary suggests that the evangelist uses Nicodemus as a stand-in for the learned class in general. And that this encounter sets up Jesus' betrayal by the learned class, a capitulation represented by a failure to face up to the demands of truth, lest position or advantage be lost. Certainly, Jesus' words are not praise for Nicodemus and his abilities. Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Amen, amen, I tell you the truth, says Jesus. We speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive. What is it that this we of whom Jesus speaks knows? What is it that they have seen? Could Jesus be speaking here inclusive of the Trinity? Even as he calls himself the Son of Man? As the Son of Man, he is the one who descended from heaven. Does this Son of Man speak of and bear witness to? the truth which he has seen and heard in the heavenly courts? Yes. Yes, this Son of Man bears in his person the truth come down from heaven into a world broken and dominated by the dark deceits of Satan, the father of lies. Holy. Oli had become fascinated by the current fashion of inking one's body. The more fascinated he became, the more he coveted a tattoo for himself. After several weeks of agonizing over it, he went late one night to an artist on the far side of town. Once done, Oli could hardly wait to heal. When his new ink was finally presentable, he visited Lars for some show and tell. 
Pushing down his waistband, Ole displayed the little Norse rune he'd had inked on his hip. Lars was impressed and said so. He asked what it meant. Ole said, honesty. Then Lars asked, what does Lena think? Ole answered, she doesn't know and you're not going to tell her. In this world. In this world, broken by sin, darkened by deceits from the father of lies, in this kingdom, which in its sinfulness is passing away, we have. We have in front of us an answer to Pilate's question. What is truth? Ask the children of the father of lies. What is truth? We ask the answer. Truth is treason in an empire of lies. Truth is treason. Truth betrays the children of the father of lies. The truth standing before Nicodemus betrayed the many millennial long accommodation made by Jewish rulers with their scriptures. The truth standing before Pilate betrayed his manipulation of truth for the purposes of the powerful. The truth standing before the crowd betrayed their selfishness for a God of their own imaginings. In an empire of lies, truth betrays position and advantage. Truth is treason in an empire of lies. Those who bear the truth are traitors to a citizenry of liars, betraying them to the one who is the truth, the truth itself, the one truth, the one who is treason in a kingdom of lies. Jesus. Jesus applies a metaphor to the stark reality of the cross, which is the execution of his death sentence as a traitor. The metaphor is this. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Moses had lifted up and held before the people the instrument of God's wrath upon them. And it was life. The rulers of the Jews had lifted up and held before the people the person of God's love for them. Jesus came to be their life, and they took his. They took the life of the truth who proved traitor to their lies, proved traitor to the accommodations they'd made with God's word. The one way, the one truth, the one life betrayed them, exposed them, exposed them in their coveting, coveting of position and advantage, coveting their self-chosen righteousness, coveting being something. Today, today your preacher stands before you, meeting you in the darkness like Jesus met Nicodemus. Today, your preacher marked with the cross of Christ as you are, a shared identification as if it were an inked ruin shouting, Honesty. Today, Jesus Christ on the cross is lifted up and held before you as the person of God's love whom you killed, the truth as traitor in your empire of lies. The one truth betrays you in your empty deceits. The only honesty betrays you in your less-than-honest accommodations. You don't desire the hallowing of God's name 
but the exaltation of your own. You don't desire God's will to be done among you, but that the things you will would be called God's will. You don't desire the kingdom of God, but a kingdom of your own building. You. You really want to be something when you are nothing. You, marked by the cross of Christ, you washed by washed in the honesty of your baptism into Christ you who once again know the ruin of being nothing you now know you have but one thing in which to boast that the son of man descended from heaven to be your life while you were dead in trespass while you are dead in trespass to be your something while you are nothing, to be your truth in this empire of lies, to be the true son who sets you free from being the illegitimate get of the father of lies. Now, during these days of your baptism, Now, as you wait between your sacramental death of water and the word and your physical death of going down to the grave, down to the dust, during these days, you walk by the humiliation of faith, not by the exaltation of sight. These days are not days of glorious position and advantage, but days of a humble walk, walking in the way prepared for you, a way in, among, and through the darkness, a way revealed by occasional applications of the truth, of the light of the truth, a light not yours to possess, but to receive again and again. And so you have on this day too. On this day you have received the light of the truth, the light of Christ for the revealing of your death in this empire of lies and the revealing of your birth from above. Truly, truly, Let it be with you, as the Lord has said. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as yet we wander amid the darkness of this empire of lies, so deliver to us your word that Christ will be our truth. Heavenly Father, while Christ is our truth, do not abandon us to despair in our waiting for those occasional applications of truth which frees us from the father of lies. Heavenly Father, while we wait for faith to become sight, fill our hands with labors useful to our neighbors and helpful to our communities. Heavenly Father, During these days of our waiting, continue to send preachers of Christ and him crucified and him alone, and continue to uphold those places of sending. Continue the Institute of Lutheran Theology as one of those places of sending. Heavenly Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting to your love in all things, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ has set you free.